So today I'm going to preach two messages, but it's really one message. There's a part in the message that I'm going to spend time on, which I want us to repent for. Welcome to those who are streaming. The Lord bless you. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I'm going to read it. In the New King James Version. New King James. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us do what? Lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set. Before us, doing what? In verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was... Now, please, that statement, read it carefully. Jesus, the author and finisher of our... Who? Yo. Ne? Who what? For the joy that was said before him, what did he do? He enjoyed the cross, despising the shame, and as a result, he has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. That a whole statement up to the end of the verse is connected to how Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Those are the things that Jesus had to go through in order for him to be able to author and have the power to finish our faith. Now, when the Bible says he is the author and the finisher of our faith, it is talking about the lifestyle of faith. Like I, I did last week to differentiate between faith and the faith. Faith being how you specifically believe. The, the faith being your life of belief in a God you do not see yet you serve him. He is the author of the faith, the lifestyle of faith that we live before God. Okay, do you get what, what he is saying in that verse now? Not our faith in J at, at that level where we believe for things, but the lifestyle that we are living, the lifestyle of faith. He is the author. He, he begins it and he's the one who's going to finish it. So Jesus said to your neighbor, Jesus is the reason for my faith. In God. If there was no Jesus, I would have, nobody would have any reason to believe. I saw a clip of a man called John MacArthur. A great teacher of the word. During the days when he was interviewed by this great guy on CNN. I, uh, who is this guy? Larry King. Larry King, interview. John MacArthur just simply explained salvation as it appears in the Bible without flinching. John MacArthur, 
he told Larry King that Jesus Christ is the only way. And then Larry King says, so the, what about the others, the others who believe other, uh, who have other faiths? And John MacArthur says, this is the only man who died on the cross and rose again. John There's no other one. So he's the only way that the script, and he was, he was, he was kind of saying, he put it with the attitude that says, it's not me, it's what is written in the scripture. The scripture says, Jesus Christ is the way. He is the only author of faith in God. What is an author? It means he is the originator. The initiator. He is the trailblazer. He is the captain. He is the prince of our faith. It means without Christ, no one has ability to have faith. You get that? Without Christ, there is no one who has the ability to have faith in God for salvation. Jesus did it in two ways. Firstly, he became a perfect example of the life of faith. That is why we use him as an example even when we preach. I'm going to do it also today. And number two, he did that by becoming the captain of our salvation. In other words, he became the prince. Prince Ak. It means the, 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 the top person, uh, the leader, the one responsible for our salvation. There is why it says in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10, it was fitting for him, Jesus, it was fitting for him, for whom all things, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things. You know what that statement means? That statement means he created all things, therefore all things belong to him. In bringing many sons to glory, when you came to Christ, you came to glory. It says to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Please, please hear me this morning. Jesus suffered for you to have faith. See what he did on the cross? It was so you can have faith in God. That is how he offered your faith. So, like I said last week, do not despise that faith. He's not only the author, he's also the finisher. He's the completer and perfecter. In other words, as we mature, into his image our faith is actually maturing. That's why we can have spiritual capacity. Now, this verse I just read to you it, it is preceded by chapter 11. And in chapter 11 it speaks about people who kept the faith. The people who lived a life of faith even unto death, some of them. And the Bible says they received a good testimony before God. And their stories were 